Welcome to this Alan Talks Tech video. If you'd like additional information on my technology videos, please visit my wiki at alantesswiki.pbworks.com. Just as in the past, time is money, and in today's modern IP networks, time is becoming more critical than ever before. Time synchronization is important in many different technologies and applications. For example, test and measurement, factory automation, power plants, telecommunications, cellular, robotic control, and last but not least, financial. Even in the time of Benjamin Franklin, time was very important, and many of his quotes can still be applied today, especially with modern financial applications such as high frequency trading, where literally time is money. With the accuracy provided by IEEE 1588, it is possible to measure trading times in the nanosecond range. The additional advantage of 1588 is its ability to distribute very accurate time of day information. So now we can record with very high precision when an order is placed and when it is accepted. This type of information is invaluable in many financial applications. In Ben's day, the popular saying may have been a penny saved is a penny earned, but in today's world of high frequency trading, it could well be a nanosecond saved is a dollar earned. To provide accurate synchronization and time of day distribution within the network, we need to determine who has the most accurate clock or grandmaster clock. Once this is decided, the other clocks in the network will become slaves to the grandmaster and reference their time of day and clock frequency from the single source. To determine the grandmaster, the network will use the best master clock algorithm to elect this primary timing source. Information is exchanged between all of the clocks within the network. Based on the stratum type and accuracy, the best clock source is determined. If there is more than one clock with the same credentials, a tiebreaker is determined based on the clock with the lowest MAC address. Other hints can also be provided by the network administrator to determine the best grandmaster. The 1588 specification is nearly 250 pages, but this animation will give you a good overview of the basic handshake between a grandmaster and a slave to synchronize the time and frequency of the slave clocks. Initially, the grandmaster will send a sync message to the slave. This message will contain the real time of day recorded by the grandmaster. Depending on the hardware capabilities of the grandmaster, a follow-up message is transmitted. This will use a hardware timestamp to record the exact time the previous sync message was transmitted from the hardware. The slave will use this additional information to more accurately synchronize its current time. This is known as a two-step procedure. At this point, our slave should have a good approximation of the time, but as we do not know the propagation delay across the network from the Grandmaster, we are still out of sync with real time. To solve this problem, the slave sends a delay request. On reception of the delay request, the Grandmaster records the time and immediately sends back a delay response packet containing the time that the delay request was received. Depending on the equipment being used, additional hardware timing compensations will be made to help further the accuracy of the system. As the slave has recorded the time between the delay request and the delay response, it can determine the round-trip propagation delay. The slave will now make the assumption that the round-trip delay is symmetrical. The slave divides a total round-trip delay by two, adding the result to the current time. This will compensate for the propagation delay that was not originally included to provide the correct offset. The clocks are now in sync. When the clocks are within one second of each other, the Grandmaster will instruct the slave to either increase or decrease the frequency of its clock to maintain accuracy. Depending on the network, corrections can be made up to 128 times a second. Thank you for watching this Alan Talks Tech video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to get more information on my technology videos with additional material, you can visit my wiki at alantesswiki.com. Dot pbworks.com. Once again, thanks for viewing.